It's important to know what an abstraction is because it's important for our thinking, for teaching. Teachers should know, have a good theory of it. Um, a lot of what I've seen in doing private tutoring, and this isn't merely people who need it, as some people might think. Um, some people have like goofy, weird ideas about tutoring. Um, you know, um, well, if people knew more and weren't so clueless and wouldn't run their mouth about things they don't understand, they look through history, they'd see a lot of very smart, intelligent people had tutors. Um, so I work with people who maybe are not doing well and need to do, need to do well, people who are getting A's but want to get an A+, plus. people who are doing some stuff but want to understand the material for a change. Um, Work to people, public schools, home schools, private schools, elite private schools, a lot of stuff. So, um, broad range of evidence. And of course, I know history, know some of the culture, know history of philosophy, know education, history of education, philosophy of education, so on and so forth. But, um, people have trouble knowing how to do things in physics with projectile because they don't know what a projectile is. They don't have the abstraction properly speaking. It hadn't been formed. And the teacher doesn't know what an abstraction is, so it didn't know how to teach it. The student, it's a student. They're just learning. They don't know epistemology. Um, teachers should know more, but of course, it's in the culture, not the teacher's fault necessarily. Where the hell are they going to learn it? I mean, when do people really address what an abstraction is like they should, how reasoning works, what logic is, how we should think, how explanation works, so on and so forth, ad infinitum, there's a lot more involved. Never, rarely, anyway. Um, projectiles, atoms, electrons, synecdoche, um, a lot of things in discussion, or even, I don't know what these two people know or understand, but in listening to a podcast episode, which I recommend, good stuff. Not everybody knows everything, so you know people make mistakes and have things to learn. We all do, um, and of course myself included. We're not like some people who are, like think they're better than everybody, you know. Um, in some ways, you can look in human history, you know, from society how some people want to be followed and worshipped. Don't have the sense and kind of humbleness or whatever you want to call it that they should, but. Um, Dr. Tumble Grandin was being interviewed by Jordan Peterson, maybe about two hours, really interesting episode, a lot of good things in it, recommend it, I'd listen to it again, but they don't know what abstraction is, at least it doesn't come up in there, I don't hear it, them really getting a good idea of what abstraction is um, in there also, so um, some people think and you can see it in the way some people talk and teach and so on if you can use the same word string as someone else then you know what they're talking about not words are not knowledge they're just auditory symbols or um, visual symbols or tactile symbols um, it is not knowledge to know some words or to learn some abstraction without examples and stuff is not an abstraction. Abstraction is something, it is a meaning. That is a mental process or the product of a mental process. Just like we can talk about science or science, science the process, the method, science the results of it. Um, we do that for some things, but what some people are talking about is not an abstraction, but a counterfeit abstraction, fake abstraction, or like some might call it like floating, separate from reality. Um, abstraction proper is a process of finding what's in common in some things. Um, it's a matter of drawing out some commonality or generality from some particular things. And it's in the historical record. Um, from what I've 
learned so far, I think Aristotle was the one that coined the concept of abstraction for this process. Um, and that's what he meant. So, um, and I'll put some links to some of this in the description field and some quotes as much as I can. But um, here, for example, um, in this article, a philosophical article, The Conception of Abstraction by Alan Bach, Kutztown University, um, maybe some, is it a, in the Society for Ancient Greek Philosophy newsletter. Um, so at the beginning, he says, quote, philosophers deal with abstractions. Being reflective, they also have come up with theories about what these abstractions are. Aristotle is no exception and indeed gave what came to be a canonical account of abstraction. Here I shall investigate what Aristotle thinks abstraction is. I shall conclude that Aristotle views abstraction as selective attention. As its very name suggests, abstracting consists in taking away something from an object. The root verb um, in Greek, what is it? I can't pronounce the Greek. Um, alpha, epsilon, rho, epsilon, omega, um, epeo, something like that maybe, suggests additionally a sense of grasping or of choosing, of taking for oneself something of what lies ready to hand, unquote. And here, um, in the Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy article about Aristotle, quote, one reason that Aristotle believes that mathematics must proceed by abstraction is that he wants to prevent a multiplication of entities. For example, he does not want to say that in addition to there being a sphere of bronze, there is another separate mathematical sphere, and that in addition to that sphere, there is a separate mathematical plane cutting it, and that in addition to that plane, there is an additional line limiting the plane. It is enough for a mathematical ontology simply to acknowledge that natural objects have real mathematical properties not separate in being, which can nevertheless be studied independently from natural investigation." Unquote. So there's things that we can study using our minds, in other words. Quote, Aristotle also favors this view due to his belief that mathematics is a demonstrative science. Aristotle was aware that geometry uses diagrammatic representations of abstracted properties, which allow one to grasp how a demonstration is true, not just of a particular object, but of any class of objects that share its quantitative features. Through the concept of abstraction, Aristotle could explain why a particular diagram may be used to prove a universal geometrical result. Unquote. Um, so, for example, if we have these things we see, we automatically abstract away that they're dogs, or they're cats, or they're apples, because it's like pretty obvious. Um, and then on a more higher abstract, complicated level, um, we abstract away from people and groups of people and institutions and rules, the concept government or the concept of capitalism or socialism or communism or monarchy. Um, and we can, from a spark and some Leyden jar stuff. A Leyden jar is like a device people used to study electricity, static electricity a long time ago. When it was, the science was developing, it's, you know, what we had to do to get where we are now. Otherwise it wouldn't happen. Um, this and that, and people can abstract away the idea of electricity. Um, 
or we got these things like repel here and they attract here. Oh, magnetism. So we abstract that away and then we can abstract away principles like um, North Poles always repel, North and South attract, things like that. Or for a right triangle, A squared plus B squared equals C squared in Euclidean geometry, everywhere, always, and all times. Um, we could have this focus, select a focus, and think of, and it comes up, it's like we can look at a table as um, an object of physics, and think about it in free fall, or we can have a perspective on a table. It's the exact same thing. We just have a different perspective on it. We can think of it as um, an item of furniture and how it aesthetically relates to the rest of the furniture and house. So we could look at it as physics, as aesthetically, look at it in context of what it's made of, the material, if it's wood, um, so on and so forth. Same thing, but we can attend to it or think about it in a different context. Um, so there's more what abstraction is or what it's about. So you got, you know, you don't have like this thing that's like a bronze and round and this thing that's silver and round and wooden round. They're all different. No, we abstract away something they have in common. They're spherical, where we can abstract away that they're all made of some material. Or we can abstract away, and it took a while for scientists to do this and to prove it. It's not at all obvious. We can abstract away that they're made of atoms. Um, and so to do this stuff, it doesn't co come without real things. Abstraction is a process that requires real things and examples. If we don't have examples, we don't know what the hell we're talking about. And that's where some of this stuff comes up. People think you can have an abstraction without examples or context or reality. No, it does not happen. As not there. No, it's, let me see. Minimize browser. Um, so, for example, as St. Thomas Aquinas, a great philosopher, said, quote, nothing is in the intellect that was not first in the senses, unquote. That is relevant to the process of abstraction. If an abstraction doesn't come from examples and things and experience and sensation, it is a failure to be an abstraction. That will help you, help you see why sometimes you don't know, you know, we've all experienced it. We don't know what the hell we're talking about. We build confusion on confusion on confusion. It's because of a poor epistemology and we're not, it's not systemic in the culture and in education to build up abstractions properly, step by step from the evidence of the census. How does this idea relate to reality? Where does it come from? Just for example, um, you can't get the Pythagorean theorem as we know it without knowing algebra. You got to know squares. You got to know how to, and that means to know what a square is. You got to know how you got you, how to multiply, because you're multiplying something by itself. And to know that, usually we go through it addition first. But to know that, we need number and we need to count. We start with things. We learn to count real things in the real world. It's not made up stuff in the head. You got to have stuff to count. Otherwise, there's no counting, and we don't get a concept of it. Then you get number. Then you can add. And you can get more advanced and learn to multiply. It's like, think of multiplication. Later, you can think of it as scaling. But at first, it's like um, short, quick addition. 9 times 9, or let's say 3 times 2 is 2 and 2. Let me see. 2 and 2 and 2. 6. Um, 3 times 2. 2, 3 times. 2 plus 2 plus 2. Or... Um, then we can square. You got to know about addition, equations. You have to know about triangles and shapes. You have to, would have had to have learned some shapes first and different ones. 
there's concepts we need to build up upon to get um, Pythagorean theorem, for example. Never mind something more advanced, like and involved, like maybe I could compare the two, but probably lightning is electricity. That probably is more abstract. Um, but electromagnetism sure is the unity of electricity and magnetism, uh, Maxwell's equations. That's way more involved, a lot more concepts, a lot more experience, a lot more things need to be identified, classified, and built, and generalizations need to be, to be developed, and instruments need to be developed, and all this stuff is to be put together. Concepts, abstractions, principles, generalizations, integrated into a theory, math, differential equations, calculus, a lot of stuff, um, change, but that's how a prop, how an abstraction proper is made. Um, try telling someone, oh, the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, who doesn't know algebra, calculus, or whatever, algebra, don't need calculus, triangles or anything like, anything like that, and clearly they will not know what the hell you're talking about, because they don't, because abstractions don't work like that. It's not memorizing words, it's not, oh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, now I see it, there are triangles, there's multiplication, there's multiplying numbers by themselves, now I see it, cubes and cortex and so on. No one does that ever. That is not what an abstraction is. So thank you to those of you out there who get it correct. Have a good epistemology and get this stuff. And those who are learning, I didn't know this before either, but um, we got people out there who are making mistakes and need to stand corrected. But that's what we're here for. We're social animals, need to help each other. I sure the hell did not figure this out on my own. It took a lot of reading and studying from to see what other smart people say. So, um, you know, we are so self-sovereign social animals. We should help each other figure out what the truth is and not of fads that are wrong or social cohesion stuff that's wrong, but social cohesion stuff that is correct. Like a good view of abstraction. As I say, as we know, we've all done some stuff where we don't know what the hell we're talking about because we have words or we think we have some idea without the examples and the reasoning that lead to it, like a good geometric proof or like some honest lawyer like Abraham Lincoln would do to build a good law case. Um, you got facts, eyewitness testimony, things you can measure and obvious conclusions from the scene of the crime or whatever, or what happened, and legal precedent, and getting this stuff you can put together in the basic step-by-step -step of proof, like a like law case is in, like a geometric proof, and that's what he did. He studied Euclid's elements, memorized them to make himself a better um, reasoner. It's in the historical record. People actually wrote a book about it, Abraham Lincoln and the Structure of Reason. Recommended reading. I'll try to put a link to that. Um, Lincoln Reasoning Book. So you can see it for yourself if you're interested. But um, again, quote, nothing is in the intellect that was not first in the senses, unquote, St. Thomas Aquinas. Or as I've said before, um, Galileo says, um, in defending his ideas that the earth goes around the sun and that things in the heavens change. Because people used to think that stuff in the heavens didn't change. The moon was perfectly spherical. Um, it didn't have bumps and mountains on it and all this. And there weren't sunspots. If you thought there was a sunspot, no, it couldn't be. It was just like an illusion or something in the Earth's atmosphere, but he knew there were some spots. Um, but from the second letter of Galileo Galilei to Mark Welser on sunspots, page 118 of my edition of Discoveries and Opinions of Galileo, translated by Stillman Drake. 
Galileo writes, quote, I should even think that in making the celestial material alterable, I contradict the doctrine of Aristotle much less than do those people who still want to keep the sky inalterable. For I am sure that he never took its inalterability to be as certain as the fact that all human reasoning must be placed second to direct experience, unquote. Like what Aquinas said. Nothing is in the intellect that was not first in the senses, unquote. Then we will get good abstractions. Then some people in podcasts can have better discussions or can understand why some issue comes up. If someone can't look at a particular power plant and figure things out, and they're dealing with abstractions, no, they don't have abstractions. They have fake abstractions, floating abstractions, nothing real. They did not get their idea. They did not get a similarity from things in common. Like, as I've said, I did something about that with projectile. Um, and it came up like with a student I was working with recently too, through no fault of her own. She's a student, she's young. They're learning atoms and chemistry. <sighs> Fail to teach it. Here's atoms, here's electrons, here's protons. And of course they're wondering, what is a proton? What is an electron? Where are they? How do I know? Like, can I like have some understanding or knowledge of this stuff instead of just memorizing? You know, otherwise it's just, okay, here's the atomic number and the number of protons is the same. And we get the mass number and mass number minus number of protons is the number of neutrons. And neutrons? What the hell is a neutron? Like, why are they there? Electrons is the same as like the protons? Oh, but if it's CA2+, plus, then if it's 2+, plus, why don't I have two more electrons? What's going on? You know? It's not developed and understood. If one's, people are going to use the concept and it's important, then develop where it comes from as an abstraction. Otherwise, don't do it at all. All it does is, like it says there, and does for a lot of people, it causes confusion, makes them doubt reasoning, makes them wonder what the hell's going on in science, makes them not understand logic. Then they have nothing they can do to go forth in like adult life. Is someone going to be good at work and in life, like being given some words and being told to do something with them? That is a total fail. What the hell? You know? No. We should care about their lives. This should be have emotional impact for anyone who's a parent or a teacher or a human. If someone hears this and doesn't have strong emotion about it, what the hell? We're talking about people being successful in human life. Thinking matters. Do you want to help someone be better in the future or not? Do you want to confuse them? Of course, some people do look at human history. But we should care about the youth, our children, other people's children, and do the best we can with them so they can live a good life and have a better society. Um, or if someone likes all this like conflict nowadays and all this crap, and you want more, well, you're getting it. Um, and so, of course, that's the way some people are. Um, it's in some Shakespeare. Who's that evil character in Shakespeare? I forgot right now. But you look back. We're social animals. Some people want to control others and all that. But um, a proper thing to do for people who love life and want to be reasonable and want to be rational and want to live well. Be optimal humans and live an optimal life mental and physical prowess. Um, we should develop the concepts, abstractions, principles, thinking, argumentation, like putting stuff together into a theory that led to the atomic theory. And it you know, you do it efficiently. It doesn't sound like it takes forever. Um, it should be done. Then we can talk about atoms. Um, and it doesn't have to be first in chemistry. It's kind of backwards. People learned a lot of stuff in chemistry before atoms. That should be done anyway. Get these abstractions that people learned by experimenting and observing and being scientific with material things and react chemical reactions. Then you bring in the atomic theory and you got this whole new insight on it. Um, then be better. But trying to teach like some people do they think they're smart well let's teach fourth graders a periodic table 
nonsense. That's like, oh, let's have fourth graders memorize calculus. Everyone would know that's a total failure, but it's the same thing with the periodic table. It's like playing Pokemon. The students have zero idea what it means. And it's not really getting them ready for things. Later, there's more important things to do, like people should be trained more to focus on reality, observe, differentiate, find similarities, look at cause-effect relationships. Way more important than memorizing like some stuff that a lot of people are never gonna use. They would use it if it was taught better, but a lot of people don't think they're gonna use it or don't think they need it because it's not taught well. Like calcium, do we not need to know that? Wrong. What do people talk about with strong bones? Calcium. Um, or calcium channels in cells. And we need to know about the existence of different minerals because trace minerals are important. People like are too cray cray because of the culture and stuff. I used to do the same. They're too cray cray about calories. Um, people should focus more on nutrients and what we need. We are not chemical experiments. We're not little fires in a fireplace. We are complex dynamic biological feedback systems we're you in. We need magnesium and zinc, and those aren't calories. Um, we need proteins, and we use them not merely as calories. We need calories and fuel, obviously, but way more or what does your heart need? My heart doesn't need carbohydrates. You look it up, hearts need fat. That's how they run. Different organs and tissues use different um, fuel sources. Some fat, some carbohydrate, some both. Um, the brain can function on different things. But um, when we learn things in the real world and abstract from there, then we'll see the importance of chemistry. Since it's taught as an abstract subject, no one gets it. It's not related to reality. It doesn't come out of reality. Hence, no one cares. They don't get it. They don't care. When it's developed from reality, like instead of learning DNA, who cares about that? Does anybody have a little DNA flesh doll? Whoa. It's like the new major toy. I got my DNA flesh doll. No one cares. Dogs? Cats, squirrels, bunnies, that's what they care about. Because it's real, and you can do science on things like that. Where did they come from? What should they eat? Not merely, oh, look, everyone has dried dog food at the store. Let's feed that. No. What is right? What does the dog need? <coughs> what nutrients? Um, and why? And where do they come from? And if they come from wolves, what do wolves eat? And how does that come into play with dogs? And water retention, all this stuff. When it's real like that, nothing that is not, what does it say? Let's see. Quote, nothing is in the intellect that was not first in the senses, unquote. <clears throat> and so when we do that, it's things we know we can understand, we care about, then science will be real and students will have a grasp of it. But one thing we have to get right is the epistemology of what we're doing. We don't just teach science and do stuff um, like whatever, fail. Is it's clear if we look, but yeah, we got to have the concepts to know what's going on. Same thing here. I didn't know some things, you know. Um, there's some things that without concepts for we're clueless to. You know, some things are perceptual, we can see. Um, some things like without the proper concepts in true valid theory, do we know that electricity and magnetism are different aspects of the same thing? Not, never, no one ever. Do we know that the earth goes around the sun? Not, no, never, no one ever. Um, there's a lot of things we've got to know to really understand that the earth goes around the sun and why and all that. Um, so, or you can't see a capitalism, you can't see a socialism that takes an abstract viewpoint on certain things. But it's got to be developed from experience. You can't say 
government. Oh, therefore capitalism, therefore socialism. No, no one ever. It's ridiculous. We got to get it by looking at the world and seeing what happens in it, what the cause effect relationships are, what things are there, then we can get it. So abstractions, if we're going to do things right and have a good educational system and have people be more successful in life, be able to communicate better, learn better, think better, do better at work, understand the world around them and care, understand how reasoning works better. One thing we need to do is get the epistemology right, get a proper view of abstraction. There's some food for thought. Um, so my recommendation is to dig into some good stuff, please. Look at um, Aristotle and what he thought. Um, look at some people who followed in line with him. Look at how scientists developed abstractions in their work. Study some history of science because it'll help you a lot like that. Um, think about how someone figured out this concept or think about some things at work that matter. So if you got some concept, financial instrument, derivative, derivative in finance, derivative in calculus, what are the things in reality that led to that idea? Um, what things do we need? And we see they have something in common that we can find that commonality among these things, just like with spheres. You got this roundish thingy of bronze, roundish thingy of oak, water oak, roundish thingy of live oak, roundish thingy of mud. What are they all in common? The commonality, um, even though there's all these differences, the commonality is sphericity. So that's a pretty easy one, but same kind of thing comes up in other areas. Um, like, what do predators have in common for keeping the environment healthy? So something like that. Um, what do projectiles have in common in physics? Well, you know, like, where does the concept come from? And what do all these things have in common? And how are they different from other things that are not projectiles? Then we're dealing with reality and students can see what's going on. We can think about something at work because we have examples, get a range of examples, see what they have in common in contrast to what and in a certain context. Um, then we will be much better off because a lot of what we do depends upon our thinking. Peace.